Today we're going to be doing an OPI Infinite Shine review and wear test. I'll be trying out their base coat, the top coat, and the polish. I'll also be sharing the seven lessons that I learned along the way. Lesson number one is to open all of your bottles up before you get started. Trust me on this one, y'all, because I did not and I instantly regretted it. Now we're going to start with our prep. I prefer glass nail files. You can totally use an emery board, but I'm just going to do some quick shaping before we get started. And yes, you guys, I will be doing both hands. So once I'm done shaping both of my hands, I'm going to dust them off. Then in my prep routine, my next step is going to be using my glass cuticle pusher. This is just my go-to. I feel like it removes so much on the natural nail plate. So we're going to start over here in this corner of our sidewall area because that's where I have most of my common issues for lifting. So I'm going to start over here just gently pushing back the cuticle on my nail plate. And then I like to go back the same direction and do small swirls. So I just do small, very gentle swirls to make sure I don't have anything left there. Once I'm happy with it, I flip it over and I'm going to use the other side of the cuticle pusher to clean everything out and off. Once I'm done with both of the hands, I'm going to dust them off and now let's chat about dehydrating. Everyone's going to be different on what exactly their natural nails will need. Some can get away with just doing rubbing alcohol. Others prefer to use 100% pure acetone. However, this is my go-to. It has just been that ride or die for me. It is pH prep from Sparkle Co. If you have any sort of pH prep or dehydrator, that will work beautifully for this step. All right, so now I'm officially done with my own prep routine and we can get started on the the base coat. So it says it has a gel like finish. I can definitely see that in the consistency. It's a little bit on the thicker side. I'm just going to apply a very thin, even layer of this and then wait two minutes for it to dry. Lesson number two is coming in hot, y'all. If you are a nail polish baddie, this lesson does not apply to you, but if you're like me and you get humbled by it all the time, don't pick Bubble Bath. She will catfish you. It was one of the hardest nail polishes I've ever used, and I know they say that. I don't know why I totally just fell for it, but all right, y'all. We're gonna start with a thin coat, and you will see that it goes on pretty streaky, and that's when I realized for lesson number three, I did not shake my bottles. Yes, I'm leaving this in here because this is just the reality. You can see how streaky it went on. Be sure to shake up your nail polish before you get started so you don't look like a big dum-dum like me. So at this moment, I was just trying to get a thin, even coat on the nail, and that's when I realized this color really should be floated on. So floating it on means to leave more of the polish on the brush and not apply so much pressure. But I left this so you can see and watch my struggles with me, and now that's when I saw, okay, this is definitely gonna need some more finesse to it. So after this layer dries, it dried in about two to three minutes, I decided, all right, this time, this next coat, we are going to leave more polish on the brush. So lesson number four for this particular shade is to float the polish on. You'll see I'm not fanning the brush bristles out. I'm trying my best to not apply hardly any pressure so I don't get as much streakiness. I got much better coverage as you can see here on this second layer. However, this middle finger I still really struggled with. It's 100% user error. I just wanted to mention that this color is going to be difficult. If you're like the average user like myself, I would maybe pick a different shade. Here's a side by side on the difference between one and two layers. When I'm doing my dominant hand, I keep my expectations low. I just try my best to stabilize it and you will see floating it on on this hand was particularly difficult for me and this is why I wish I would have chosen a better color and I could have seen truly how much easier the formula would have been. So here is layer number two. It took another three minutes. I fanned my hands a little bit to help it dry. I'm going in for three coats. The instructions do not say to do three coats, but check out the difference in coverage between my middle finger and my pointer really floating it on again for this third layer, but I just felt like it needed a third coat to cover up all of the mess from layer number one. 
I'm officially done with the polish. I will not be adding any more coats. It is what it is. Lesson number five, I wish I would have used my angled brush with some acetone. I felt like it was quote unquote good enough, but after I noticed so many more flaws and it really gives that polished look around the cuticle area if you spend that time right now to clean it up. Now it's time for top coat. I would say that third layer took about five minutes to completely dry. This does have that same gel-like finish. So I'm just trying to float this on. I am making sure I get all the way over to those sidewalls and cuticle area, capping off that free edge so we can really get a long wear time out of it. Lesson number six is to let it dry for 20 minutes. At this point, it was about 15 and it felt dry enough to do some cuticle oil. This is what I've been using and loving. It's jojoba oil in these little cuticle oil pens that I bought and fill up myself. I'm just gonna rub all of that in. Overall, I do really like this shade. I just don't feel it's beginner friendly. It does take a lot of finesse. It will truly humble you. It did take me three coats to get coverage that I'm somewhat happy with with, but let's talk about lesson number seven. So we're gonna call this the Snacksident because as you can see on my thumbnail, I already chipped it trying to open up my snacks. Lesson number seven is eat beforehand and if not, at least open up some snacks for after. All right, so 24 hour check-in. I have now showered. I'm actually heading to a crawfish boil so I went with some pink to go with my pink nails and no cracking, no chipping, nothing, no lifting. They're looking great still, so let's go to our crawfish boil. Day three check-in after the pool, the sunscreen, the crawfish, all of it. I have only one small chip to report right here. My snacksident did not get any worse, so that's really good. I will say at this point, I started to notice that my top coat was fading slightly and the color, but day four is when I really noticed the change. It almost has a mattified look now, and maybe I'm just being judgmental of it, but you can see the wrinkling effect I have going on. I can see the color is starting to fade a little bit no more cracking and chipping to report but I decided today that I'm going to do a top coat refresh on one of my hands so I've heard of nail polish guru saying to add another layer of top coat on top after a couple days do I need the rubbing alcohol step I don't know someone will have to fill me in here if I do or not but I decided to just to make sure they're nice and squeaky clean and I'm gonna do the same top coat on top so just floating a layer of this right on top of the top coat layer. I will say it gave me that instant gratification that I was looking for. It really did refresh the shine again and gave my manicure some more life to it. Almost made that pink pop just like day one, but I left my dominant hand with just the same original top coat so we can really see the difference. You can really see that difference in the shine now. You can see my right hand has sort of a matte look where my left hand has much more of a high glossy shine. So if it is bothering you at this stage, I would definitely suggest a top coat refresh if you're able to. And if you couldn't tell, it was Memorial Day weekend when I did this. So day five is more pool and sunscreen. And honestly, day six, I didn't have anything major to report. I still have a beautiful shine on my left hand. My right hand was struggling at this point. We still have the color. No more cracking and chipping to report. It just has less of a shine, a little bit more dull and lackluster. Day seven is here and I will be removing today purely because I just can't leave it on any longer for content. You can see this is the hand I had the second layer of top coat and we are starting to get that rippling mattified look now at this point. So another three days into it and I don't have any worse cracking or chipping here. They've held off pretty well. I do see I am starting to get more fading on my dominant hand where I didn't do a great job with application. So that is user error but I see now it has a little bit of a peachy hue. I'm missing some of the top coat and the color here at the tips, all normal wear and tear, especially with that many pool days and this particular color and sunscreen and all the things. I consider this a total win to have seven days wear. 
If I could go back and pick a different shade, I absolutely would, and I would suggest you try a different one too. So I'm going to start by hydrating my nails and skin before I go in with the remover. This is just that same jojoba oil I used earlier, and I'm gonna do it on both hands since I'm gonna remove both of my hands today. This is the nail polish remover I've been most gravitating towards. It's a soy polish remover from Ella Amila. It's not super strong, so don't expect it to go really fast. We're supposed to let the cotton ball sit and saturate it for like 20 to 30 seconds, but I like this one a lot because it doesn't make my nails or skin feel super dried out. It is extremely hydrating and very moisturizing. So if you're looking for something that's less harsh and it doesn't have a harsh odor, I highly suggest trying this one out for nail polish. This is before I have washed my hands so you can see my nails and skin are very moisturized and hydrated and happy. I know everyone's experiences with polishes and wear tests and reviews are going to be different because we all have different nail chemistries, nail lengths, lifestyles, all the things. However, I had a really positive experience with this. I just would not choose a bubble bath moving forward, but I'd love to give a different shade a try next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all next week.